whether it's responding to emails, chat messages, writing for school, or as part of your job, the ability to quickly fix typos and punctuation makes Grammarly invaluable. However, if you want to take your Grammarly game to the next level and get the most out of your premium subscription, then here are 10 pro tips you can implement immediately. And first up, you can reduce the time it takes to make corrections by using Grammarly's autocomplete and autocorrect features, which you'll find by clicking on the browser extension. With the feature enabled, Grammarly will autocorrect spelling mistakes and highlight those corrections with a gray dotted line. It will also autocomplete suggestions whilst you're typing, which you can choose to accept by pressing the tab key. The Grammarly editor offers a similar feature where you can accept all spelling and grammar corrections in one go simply by clicking the option. The only place you may find this more of a hindrance than a benefit is when using the Grammarly keyboard on your phone. You can disable autocorrect by opening the Grammarly app and clicking on keyboard settings. However, my preference is to leave it on, but also enable revert autocorrect with a backspace. So if I'm not happy with Grammarly's correction, a simple tap on backspace reverts the change. If you tend not to make use of Grammarly's sidebar, then you're potentially missing out on the opportunity for Grammarly to improve the clarity and readability of your text. Here, Grammarly offers an alternative to my sentence that reduces the wording by 18% whilst improving its clarity. Similarly, if you bring up the writing assistant by clicking on the G in the Grammarly keyboard app, you can do the same thing. If you use Grammarly for work, it's worth taking an extra second or two to set writing goals. So whatever the situation, you can assess the tone of your writing before hitting send. By using Grammarly's writing goals, you can ensure that the tone of your all staff emails or even a broadcast message in Zoom always comes across appropriately without ever sounding abrupt or angry. One thing to note with tone detection is that it requires at least 150 characters for Grammarly to make an assessment. If your writing frequently requires you to quote other authors or excerpts of text, then you may prefer Grammarly to ignore anything in quotes, which you can set in the editor by clicking on the menu in the top left corner of the screen and choosing editor settings. This brings us nicely on to the next tip, which is to define your global writing styles which you can access by clicking on suggestion management here, or simply by going into customize in your Grammarly account settings. These are your personal stylistic settings. Disabling any of these will prevent Grammarly from suggesting them when reviewing your text. For instance, when writing the time, I prefer to include a space between the number and whether it's AM or PM. So I choose to disable this option. Similarly, I know it's frowned upon, but I also tend to start sentences with a conjunction, so turning this option off stops Grammarly from constantly pointing it out. Also in the customized section of your account is the language tab. Here you can tell Grammarly if English is not your native language and you can enable the fluency assistant, which will prompt Grammarly to offer suggestions to commonly misinterpreted word usage, such as the example that Grammarly gives here where it recommends changing the word do to make so that the sentence reads, we've been able to make some progress here. Personally, even as a native English speaker, I find this a really useful feature, so I like to have it enabled. To open documents in the Grammarly editor, of course, you can copy and paste from one to the other or import and export, but a really quick alternative is to either drag and drop your document over the Grammarly shortcut or drag and drop it over the editor itself. This will automatically open the editor and there's your document ready to go. You probably already know that double clicking on a word will bring up a list of synonyms. However, did you know that you can actually click on any word on any website and Grammarly will provide a definition? If this feature isn't working for you, try disabling suggestions for the site and then re-enabling the option and that should fix it. If you've ever noticed that Grammarly fails to activate or offer suggestions in certain instances, then it might be because Grammarly ignores areas such as comment boxes that are less than 38 pixels in height. 
You can always manually activate Grammarly by clicking on the G icon or the green dot, usually located to the right of the text box. And of course, if you don't require Grammarly at all on a particular website, you can always deactivate it from the browser extension. Finally, if you want to speed up correcting chat messages when using the Grammarly keyboard for mobile, remember you can always swipe left to ignore a suggestion, or if it's a word that Grammarly doesn't recognize, but you use it a lot, you can add it to your personal dictionary and Grammarly will ignore it from that point onwards. So those are 10 tips for getting the most out of Grammarly. If you frequently use WhatsApp to chat with your friends and family, then you may be interested in these 10 tips for protecting your WhatsApp account and your privacy. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of how to make WhatsApp more secure, providing greater protection for your privacy, it's worth just reiterating that the messages you send on WhatsApp are encrypted and therefore only readable by you and the person or group you send them to, which is a very good thing. The main issue many privacy advocates have with WhatsApp is that Facebook, who owns WhatsApp, make their money by selling advertising space. And to increase the likelihood of you clicking on those ads, it helps to know a little bit about you, such as where in the world you live, your hobbies and your interests, and who you're friends with. According to Forbes, WhatsApp collects much more of this metadata than Signal or Telegram. But to put this into perspective, the article goes on to say WhatsApp doesn't collect as much as Facebook, Messenger, Google, Instagram, Snapchat, or TikTok, which is something worth bearing in mind. So whilst it's not all bad, here are 10 features you can take advantage of that go some way to improving both the security and the privacy of your data whilst using WhatsApp. And first up is to enable two-step verification. If you do nothing else, please turn on this feature. In my last video, I demonstrated just how easy it is for hackers to take control of your WhatsApp account. And yet you can effectively prevent this from ever happening to you by going into settings, followed by account, and enabling two-step verification. Once enabled, this PIN code will be required when you activate your account on a new device. So whilst many people have been duped into sending hackers their activation code, it's extremely unlikely you'll ever be duped into sending both the activation and the PIN code. Next up is something WhatsApp only implemented recently, which is view once images and videos. The problem with WhatsApp is that when you send a photo or video, by default, it automatically gets saved to the recipient's photo library. And deleting the media from WhatsApp does not delete it from the recipient's library. There's nothing you can do about this second copy. It will be stored on the recipient's phone and potentially backed up to their computer or their iCloud forevermore until the time they decide to delete it. You can prevent this by sending videos and images as view once. Having taken your photo or chosen it from the library, click on the little view once icon next to the send button, thus ensuring your image won't be saved to the recipient's phone after they viewed it. If you want to take this approach one step further, I would also recommend enabling disappearing messages. Annoyingly, there isn't an option to enable this feature across the board for all chat sessions, but you can enable it on individual chat sessions by clicking on the name of the person you're chatting with and choosing disappearing messages. Enabling this option ensures your messages will be deleted from the recipient's phone after a week, which let's be honest is much better than leaving a complete history of your conversation scattered across people's devices, potentially dating back years. For the same reason I choose to disable backups from my chat history. I mean, is it really necessary to keep a record of everything you've said, including the things you may have regretted saying? You can disable chat backups in settings by clicking on chats from the menu and setting chat backups to off. WhatsApp Web is a really useful way of sending messages when you're on a laptop or desktop computer. However, it also acts as an easy way for someone to access your WhatsApp account. If you tend to use this feature a lot on a variety of different computers and devices, it's always worth checking which devices you're still logged into and logging out of any you no longer or rarely use. 
If at any time you want to be sure that the conversation you're having is 100% private, whether it be a call or a chat message, you can verify the security code that you share with the recipient. Each chat session has its own unique 60 digit code. The code should always be the same for both you and the person you're chatting with. Next time you catch up in person, you can verify this code by clicking on the chat session, clicking on the person's name at the top of the window and choosing encryption. You can simply compare codes or scan each other's barcodes. If you're on the other side of the world to each other, you can always compare codes by clicking on the share icon and choosing a different app to send your code. You'll appreciate the benefits of this code when you also enable security notifications. By enabling this feature in settings followed by privacy, you'll be notified if the verification code ever changes. Now there are legitimate reasons for a code changing, say if the person you're chatting with reinstalls WhatsApp or upgrades their phone. However, by being notified when this occurs, it allows you to check that the reason is definitely legitimate and not the result of your friend's account being hacked. Concerns about privacy should also be extended to those around you. Separate from iOS notifications, WhatsApp has its own notification settings that allow you to disable previews by going into settings followed by notifications. Disabling previews eliminates the risk of anyone inadvertently reading your messages when you receive a notification on your lock screen. Once disabled, all they'll ever see is who the message is from. On the topic of being wary of your surroundings, if you usually have your phone set to only lock after a few minutes of inactivity rather than immediately, it's a good idea to enable screen lock. This requires Face ID to separately unlock your WhatsApp account. With screen lock enabled, even if someone were to access your phone, they won't be able to access your WhatsApp account. My final tip is to turn off read receipts. Let's be honest, there's always occasions where you read a message and can't be bothered to reply straight away. By turning off read receipts, it instantly eliminates a million questions such as why you've read the message and not bothered to respond. There's absolutely nothing wrong with reading a message and not replying immediately. So disable read receipts by going into account followed by privacy. So there we have it. If you found the video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more quick videos like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.